We honor our Father God, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. We also honor our General Chief Overseer, Bishop Dr. Calvin Wortham, his Assistant Overseer, Bishop Bonnie Guster, to our Chief Helpers as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Trial Bishop Ronnie L. Mosey. I'm the senior pastor here at the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, which he purchased with his own blood incorporated, located here at our headquarters at 7206 East 38th Street in the city of Indianapolis, Indiana. Today is April the 7th, 2023, uh, which is a very special day within the Christian community. It is worldwide recognized as Good Friday. When I began to read about the sufferings that Jesus Christ encountered uh, on that day in history, church, I began to ask myself this question. Why would anyone consider this day to be called Good Friday? In John chapter 18, verse 13, first Jesus is arrested and led away uh, to Ananias. Caiaphas in verse 14 also persecutes Jesus as well. Uh, in John chapter 18, verse 28, Jesus is sent to stand trial before Pontius Pilate. And Pilate, in return, in Luke uh, chapter 23, sends him over uh, to Herod. Herod, in return, uh, in Luke 23, verse 11, returns him back to Pontius Pilate to be uh, persecuted, uh, put on trial. And in Luke uh, verse uh, 23 and 24, he is sentenced to death. In that same chapter, of verse, uh, uh, verses 26 to 31, Jesus is led away to Calvary. And in Luke 23, 34, uh, it is the third hour church and Jesus Christ is crucified on the cross between two thieves. Ah, uh, it is the ninth hour church and Matthew records in verse, uh, chapter 27, verse 46, Jesus cries out to the father with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabethani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And finally in John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. For many uh, of the people who looked on Jesus that they thought, he was a failure. Nothing could be farther from the truth. He was not a failure. Uh, he was not a, an imposter or a blasphemer. Uh, when he said, it is finished, he never said he was finished. He was not giving into defeat. He was declaring victory. So in thinking back in retrospect, and in reference to the betrayal of the excruciating physical pain and suffering that he endured previously that day, my final faith-filled conclusion statement is this. Out of every bad situation, God will always turn it around for your good. The word finish is the Greek word testelestai. In ancient history, church, this uh, is a common term that was used when an employee would finish their work for that day. Uh, it was used when a home was paid in full. The creditor would declare testelestai. When a prisoner has served their time, a judge would declare testelestai and his sentence was commuted. These are all metaphors, a, a picture, or an insight to what Jesus stated on the cross when he said, it is finished. So let's look at some things uh, that he finished. Number one, we must remember that Jesus willingly died in obedience to the Father for our salvation. In John chapter seven, uh, chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, there Jesus says, therefore do my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Verse 18 says, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Number two, he fulfilled over 380 prophecies in the Old Testament about uh, his coming as the Messiah. Uh, look at 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. 
Uh, thirdly, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, he completed all the requirements of the law. He states there, uh, uh, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, uh, but to fulfill. In verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle in no wise from the law will pass until it be fulfilled. Number four, he can fulfill all the Old Testament uh, sacrifices. Hebrews 10, verse 11 and 12 states, And every priest standeth daily ministering uh, and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which could never take away sins. But this man, in verse 12, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Number five, he paid our penalty and canceled our sin debt, freeing us from the law of sin and death. Look at Romans. Paul states in Romans 8, 3 and 4, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled uh, in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Number six, he wiped away all of our sin charges, disarming and stripping the evil forces of all their power. Look at Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Verse 15 says, And having small principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In closing, church, because of what Christ did for us in obedience to the Father, when he cried out, it is finished, we now have the greatest uh, eternal death benefit of all, salvation. Look at Hebrews 5 and 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Finally, if Jesus had not cried out and said, it is finished, we would have no hope for our dreams, no purpose for our destiny, no power for your problems, no peace in your heart, no place in heaven and no pardon for our sins. Let us remember this, all recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he was made, uh, made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The pain that Jesus endured gives us access to God so that we can receive his righteousness. And now we know why we can celebrate Good Friday. May God bless you and heaven smile.